Five storm systems are coming over the course of the next week to week and a half, and none of them are going to be pretty, bringing severe weather from the plains to the east coast. I'll time out all of those, and that starts with our Monday severe weather threat of enhanced coming off the Appalachians that could even turn to moderate, as we have some very intense wind gusts expected, especially in the mid-Atlantic. New system is forming. I've got all the details coming up. So we've got a closer look at that enhanced risk right here. You can see it stretches all the way from the Philadelphia area in the Mid-Atlantic, all the way on back to the Carolinas and Georgia, as well as far eastern Alabama. A considerable wind threat in that pink area that you can see right there. While it's not hatched, this is a 45% chance of damaging winds of 58 plus miles per hour within 25 miles of a point. You can have that within your enhanced risk. You can see scattered hail up to golf ball size will also be possible, especially in that yellow area right along the Appalachian chain. And we're also watching out for a few tornadoes, mainly in the Mid-Atlantic, but some of those could stretch all the way back to Alabama, so stay tuned. So here's a look at what we've got going on on our sunrise time frame on Monday morning. You can see this is around 9 a.m. Eastern time. We've got the southerly flow with two low pressure systems, one pushing into the northeast, the other making its way into portions of Indiana, the Ohio Valley as we head towards 9 a.m. You can see some lingering storm coverage from in, in the from the overnight hours, and then we've got more showers pushing on up into the northeast with that original system. Notice though our enhanced risk is coming as the second system pushes into the Appalachian Mountains, bringing those 70, 80 mile per hour wind gusts. We could even briefly see a few spin up tornadoes again some of that large hail as well as we head towards 2 p.m. Then as we go towards 5 p.m., we'll still see the chance for a few tornadoes in that zone I just circled, as well as our best chance for those wind gusts to get up to 80 miles per hour. Storms push all the way back into north of Georgia and north Alabama at that point. And then as we head towards 8 p.m. Eastern time, we start to see some of the ones in the southern part of this risk zone start to push off the east coast. But still, places like New York City, northern New York State getting in on this activity still. And we'll continue to see this push on off towards the east as we head into the overnight hours. And really, once we get towards midnight, you're in the all clear. Not in the all clear, in the plains, though, where these storms will be producing big hail. So what are we looking at beyond our severe weather risk that we have going on on your Monday? Here we go into our Tuesday. We're going to be watching for large hail and gusty winds, maybe a few tornadoes as well in portions of southern South Dakota, stretching on down into northern Kansas for us here. This isn't going to be a huge risk zone, and we'll also have a few severe storms pushing off the east coast. Here we go into our Wednesday. We've already got that slight risk expected for you there into portions of the Midwest. And as you can see, this is my graphic I've made. We're going to see isolated severe with the low pressure system in Canada. Our best tornado risk is going to be there into portions of, say, Illinois, and our best chance for strong wind is going to come on down into portions of southern Missouri, southern Illinois, on down into portions of the mid-Mississippi and lower Mississippi River Valley for us there. There's a broader look at that without the text on there. You can clearly see the yellow areas we're going to be watching for those tornadoes. Now, your severe certainty as we go towards Thursday and Thursday night, we're going to see that original system that's going to be in the plains on Wednesday push off towards the east coast, so that's why I've got a level 2 to level 3 severe weather threat coming into portions of the mid-Atlantic. We'll also have a news system, kind of like a clipper, pushing through Canada, and that will bring a medium chance, I think, for severe weather out of the Dakotas and into Minnesota. As we go towards Friday, these systems are looking to kind of fall apart a little bit, system after system, cool air trying to dive in behind it. That really just helps to limit the activity over time, which is why I think our severe risk is going to be a little bit lower as we go towards Friday, but still there into the Great Lakes as well as along the East Coast. And then as we go towards August 11th and 12th, these are your weekend storms that we're going to be watching. You can see we've got a low-pressure system pushing up into portions of the Northeast and New England as we head from Saturday into Sunday, and then we'll also have this new storm system entering the plains. We'll watch out for isolated severe weather to come out of those, but another big story is also going to be the heat that's going to be below these storms, and let's go ahead and take a look at that 6 to 10 day temperature outlook. I'll give you a look at exactly what that shows for August 12th through 16th. This has basically been the pattern on and off through July, and this continues. Look at the intense heat. It just remains into portions of the Mid-South. Also, new heat wave building into the Pacific Northwest, where temperatures will be near 100 degrees as we head towards mid-month. And the three- to four-week temperature outlook shows that this will persist. More heat index values are probably going to be above 100 to 110. They're into portions of Texas and the Arklatex. Now, in your tropical weather outlook, we have no new tropical cyclones expected during the next seven days, according to the National Hurricane Center. That doesn't mean it's completely quiet, though, as tropical waves are continuing to push into portions of the Lesser Antilles, as well as the Greater Antilles, so this does head towards places like Haiti, the Dominican Republic. Here's one, as you can see, as we go towards late week. This is Thursday and into our Friday. You can see some of the heavier shower activity trying to push on in, but again, very disorganized waves pushing on through. In terms of your tropical rain over the next week, very quiet in the Gulf of Mexico. We're going to see a lot of those fronts pushing off. You can see how they drag rain all the way on up towards 
towards Europe as, as they push west to east across the Atlantic. And really some of the drier from those fronts as well as Saharan dust is pushing that tropical activity further south. But again, we're still getting scattered totals of two to four inches over the next week or two into portions of the Caribbean. But we're looking at some spots seeing up to eight inches of rain, maybe a foot or two excuse me, maybe up to a foot in one or two locations. So keep that in mind for you there if you live in Puerto Rico, any of those locations. Like, subscribe, and comment. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Here are the credits, and stay safe with all the severe weather coming.